So you got my cage right now. I'm going to save you guys the trouble watching me dig this hole. But basically what I'm doing is I bought a pond liner. And I've laid it down and kind of got a rough idea where it needs to be dug out at. I'm using a uh, trenching shovel, which is this long narrow one, and a regular spade here. This one I'm using to keep the edges straight and also in its hard clay soil. It goes down a lot deeper than a normal spade shovel. So I use this to go down and break the hard clay up into chunks maybe 12 inches or so deep but they're narrow and then I use this one to lift them out to a pile over here and I'll go ahead and get all this dug out to where it fits this form and uh, I'll bring you back after I've got the hole so as you can see I got quite a bit <laughs> dug I mean that's a pretty large chunk of a uh, soil there clay soil I've still got several inches to go maybe six or eight inches Kind of see here on the back side, but kind of get down, however, whatever that depth is, might even be a foot um, before it's deep enough. And because it's on the hillside, this end up here will actually be under ground level, under grade. And I've got some rubber uh, pond liner that's in sheets to uh, kind of like blend that area in. This back here will be level with the ground and this will be below grade slightly uh, just just the way I got to do it because this is on the hillside you can kind of tell just by looking at it it's on the hill and uh, my whole yards on the hill so kind of see the grade is something like that if you can see that, that tree line back there where it meets the ground or uh, there you go, you can kind of see it now with the driveway going uphill there. Slightly. But again, I'll just finish digging this tomorrow or something and I won't okay, make it. Yeah, now I got the watch. hole dug for the liner. Making sure that it's level. I haven't even put the sand in it yet. You can definitely see that it's level. I never checked it the other way, but that's close enough. Um, this end down here, the small end, the shallow end, is just about at grade level, and I decided to leave this one, um, slightly higher than grade level. I gotta put some sand in there in the bottom, and backfill it, and that sort of stuff, but it's gonna work out pretty good. You'll see what I've got going on after I get further into this project.
Oh, Amazon. 300 gallons per hour pump. This is sad. Back to the drawing board it looks like. Another one of those Amazon purchases you wish you never made. Sad, sad, sad. It's supposed to be 240 liters per hour. It's supposed to be able to pump six feet in the air. That line is about three foot. And it's just barely making it. Back to the drawing board. This little pump is just not, just not doing it. I mean, it's struggling. <laughs> so I had this idea. Originally, it was going to be a waterfall. Then it turned into this water pail. And basically, I've got a, a 10 watt solar panel. It actually has a charge controller, so you could hook it up to a 12 volt battery. And a 12 volt water pump that's for a fountain that's supposed to be like 240 liters per hour. All this is bought off of Amazon as far as the pump and the solar panel goes. I don't have it hooked to a battery, I just wanted to make sure the pump worked. And the pump is kind of struggling just to pump enough water for it to flow like this. Um, I don't know what it's actually pumping, maybe three feet in the air. So the problem is, is that the pail really has to be tilted too far for this to work. So I've ordered a larger solar pump with a larger solar panel. And it'll be back to the drawing board. I just cannot win for losing. This thing filled up with water. <laughs> oh, crazy. I'm gonna have to figure out what to do about this now.